Hi, welcome everyone to Youth at the Crossroads Can TV. How are you today? Welcome, Facebook world. Hi, everybody. We are live on Facebook and live on Can TV. Welcome, welcome. Well, for those of you who haven't watched any of our videos, we are here for the young people and the, the beginning of our show, we like to take a break and get some fresh air. We inhale, we exhale. So, Facebook, <sighs> sit back and either go to your, your quiet space or imagine your quiet space. If y'all out there driving, you can do this later. Young people, let's inhale through our nose. Exhale out your mouth. Have your feet flat on the floor. You should be feeling your chest, your diaphragm expanding. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And remember we're doing this every day, whenever we feel is necessary. When you feel yourself becoming overwhelmed with different things, even when you're excited, make sure that you take a step back, you inhale, you exhale. And the same for you, Facebook. Inhale and exhale. I want to thank my son who's out there being the engineer, Bryson, and my daughter, as you all saw in the videos in the picture thank them for accompanying me today and thank you all for being with me and thank can tv this has been a great run a great experience our last show is next wednesday it's going to be an exciting day i won't tell you all that that's the day after my son's 13th birthday so it's going to be really really exciting but today's show the theme is diamonds you all probably will figure out where my inspiration came from as I, uh, as I speak. But my heart is heavy for the young people. I'm excited. School is about to end. They're going for their summer employment. They're going for their volunteer experiences. But here in Chicago, it's, it's kind of kind of heavy it's kind of uh it's kind of rough the engineer mr engineer we have a caller for real we have a caller yes, yes caller good yes good afternoon my name is ray and i called last week yes hi mr ray welcome back yeah, yes and, and you said something about children being different than they were when i was a child i'm 70 years old there is no difference because you're still a male or female, but the thing is, the parents are different. When, when I was growing up, you had to earn everything that you wanted. You weren't given, given anything. And another thing is, you said that your son has a, has a phone because he rides on a bus. People were riding buses back then, and they got along without a phone. There must be 40 other phones on that bus. So what I'm trying to say is that you're right in a perfect world. But this isn't a perfect world, and you have to teach your kids, your children, the right way to go. Not just give them stuff to, to, to satisfy their needs. Mm -hmm. let, them earn, let them earn it, and then, okay, you know, but not just give it to them to, so they don't bother you. Parents were parents back then, grand, grandparents were grandparents. You always had, always had a mother, father, a grandmother, and grandfather on both sides. Mm -hmm. so if everybody's different about parenting, but if you teach them right, you won't have to worry about nothing happening later on in life. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. So thank you for letting me talk and. Thank you. Thank you for calling back. And I'm definitely, so stay tuned because I'm definitely going to, I'm going to respond. In regards to my now 13 year old, when he was in kindergarten, his bus ride in the city in which we resided, we were residing in at the time, his bus ride was an hour and he was in kindergarten. 
so it was uncomfortable for me and it was a cheap phone that you know he just made phone calls on they didn't have the video games or whatever they're called on the cell phone they didn't have the games it was about safety so you know i was trying to describe or distinguish between a young person receiving a cell phone for safety reasons versus oh here's a phone so you can um, play games and take pictures of yourself and then post it on social media you know th those are some different things my issue was my child is on a bus and there had been situations where the school had closed and there was no one to contact to find out where my child's bus was after a few times of going through that I, I I couldn't do it anymore so I acquired the small back then it was a flip phone that had the simple service and my kindergartner was taught how to call me in emergencies and he was taught how to answer my calls because I was at home panicking waiting for it and then in regards to the young people nowadays the teens traveling it, it, it it's it's really rough it's rough for a young person who has to travel through communities. Here in the city of Chicago, as everyone knows, schools have been shut down. So there, there are many neighborhood schools that no longer exist. These young people have to go into other areas to attend school. And that is a problem for many. It's, it's, it's not simple in that oh you can just walk wherever you want here in the city of chicago other communities other cities it may be okay but i've resided in flint michigan and in the city of chicago and neither one of those two cities was it okay for young people from different communities to walk in an opposing area due to just being from a different community due to gang issues so so when i when i speak about the difference of today versus yesterday that's what i'm speaking on from the issues that the young people that i have mentored have dealt with so i'm not trying to say that our past um had it simpler or that the young people now have it simpler no i'm just explaining that this current generation and the generation that i grew up in it wasn't as easy as i would say my parents had it or my great grandparents had it where they were able to walk to school through communities it, it is it's, it's scary now and that's one of the reasons why my heart is heavy today because the public school system is about to end the young people are excited they've graduated and where what what do they do where do they go um there is an activity that i will be a part of um august 4th um you saw the mock interviews that uh we provided um advocate ucc church 103rd and avenue l that is far south and far east in the city of chicago on the southeast side on august 4th we will be hosting a youth uh, showcase spoken word gospel music mime uh dancing liturgical dancing the young people you can come out and be but to order in order for you to, to help me find you and to connect make sure you email me or call me with the youth ministers the choir directors please contact me so that i can get your young people your your choirs your groups your dancers registered so that we can make this happen a safe environment again contact miss keisha and then let's register the young people so that they can come and perform for each other this is a concert this is a showcase for them okay it will be held 103rd avenue l the church is called advocate ucc you can google them reverend malcolm griffith is the pastor so i hope that you all can come out um give me a call let's discuss let's discuss the topics the 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 genre the music let's put that together for the young people um okay so i said that my thing today was diamonds i i want to stress to the young people that that you are special 
that you are amazing, that you are a precious diamond. No matter what is going on around you, no matter what is going on in the world, no matter what is going on in the media, you are a precious diamond. And every diamond is different. So don't feel bad that you're not shaped like the next person. You're not cut and curved out like the next person. You are an individual. And in that and and being that individual person i need for you to understand that you're going to have your own trials and tribulations you're going to have your good days you're going to have your bad days as we discussed in our very first shows push through plan and, and discuss with those people that are positive influences in your life. Discuss with them what it is that you want to do. Where are the people that support your dreams? They're not bringing you down. They're not dogging you out, telling you that that stuff is impossible. Yes, you may have some impossible visions, but we want to, we can, People like me, we take those impossible visions and we work with them to help you turn them into realities. Because some of the craziest things, such as a cell phone, such as us being able to see each other on the phone, those were some crazy ideas way back when. Our grandparents, great-grandparents, and those that are deceased said that this would never be possible. My phone is airing me to people through Facebook. That was unheard of 12, 20 years ago. So your impossibleness that is going through your head today can be a reality later. So don't give up on it, but just stay around positive people who can help nurture what you're doing and what you want to do and where you want to go let me be more specific the people in your house the people where you live the people who teach you at school the people on your block may not be those positive individuals the people that you are related to just might be the most negative people in the world it's a reality. It happens for many of us. That is not to stop you. You are a diamond. And I want you to walk in your diamondness. This goes for males and females. It's going to be rough. It's, it's even harder when you have your own family not supporting you you would think well if anybody supports me it, it should be my family this in a in a perfect world that is what should happen but in most cases it's not happening so i need for you to be polite be cordial in the home setting where there may be negativity but to push through and keep yourself open to meet positive people who will encourage you who and those positive people may be doing what it is that you want to do you may meet a computer engineer while you're in, you're in a restaurant ordering your food network that may be your internship don't think that just because you're related to someone that if they're negative to you, if they're not supporting you, that is the end of the world. That is not the case. I need you to stay encouraged beyond what is in front of you. Push through and reach out to meet other people. People that are different from you. People who don't look like you. They may not study what you study. Push through and be open to meet different people okay don't just stop with what's in front of you on your block in your school and in your house that is not the end travel outside of your community 
experience new foods go to restaurants that your friends don't go to try new foods Go sit in the movies by yourself in a safe neighborhood. Go watch a movie by yourself. Go dine by yourself. Be safe in that. When you can, if you have a, a friend that likes doing different things, you all go together. Because in the city of Chicago right now, I want you all traveling in groups. I need you all to be careful. I need you all to be positive. Loving yourselves. What does that look like? What does it mean to love yourself? It means that when you look in the mirror, you're not dogging yourself talking about how fat, skinny, messed up your hair is. You're not discussing that things. You work with what you have. Do not bring yourselves down based off of what you see on TV that is stating that this is the standard of beauty. Stop doing that. Love the person that you are. Now, if you got an attitude problem, if you always talking negative about somebody else, yeah, you need to change that. But you need to first start loving yourself in order for it to project onto other people. You're negative and nasty to other people because you hate yourself. Why do you hate yourself? What has happened for you to hate yourself? Cut it out. Get over it. Work through it. Get somebody to talk about. Talk about that with. Start loving yourself so that you can love other people. Yes, people are going to talk about you. Yes, people are going to be negative. But you need to start loving yourself so you can be positive no matter what. No, you're not going to be a doormat and just let people walk all over you. No, that's not happening. But you're going to, you will speak up for yourself, but you will do it in kindness, through kindness and through love. Meaning somebody call you, call you fat and ugly and be like, well, thank you. Thank you for noticing me. How are you today? But Miss Keisha, they just call me fat and ugly. Apparently that's what they see and they'll get over it. They must be seeing themselves. But I feel that I'm fat and ugly too. Well, that is a problem, isn't it? If you're feeling fat and ugly, too skinny and unhappy and unhealthy, then what should you do? Should you start eating more fruits and vegetables? Should you increase your water intake? Should you be exercising? What do you need to do so that you feel better about yourself? Don't wait for someone else to come and say something and now you got a problem. Now you want to fight. Work on yourself. Start loving yourself. Okay? Let's get that going because all of this negativity, all this hate going on towards one another, it got to stop. It has to. Start working within. Start breathing right, start eating right, and start walking right. And then change who you're walking with. Because some of the people you're walking with, they got to go. You trying to go off to college and they talking about just sitting on a block, doing nothing. Change it. They, they're going to bring you down because they don't want you leaving them. So what you going to do about it? Stay? You got a full ride to go off to college and you going to stay on this block? For what? To make them happy? Get yourselves together, young people. You all are diamonds. Precious. Uniquely made. And you're not going to look like the diamond next to you. So don't even worry about that. Stand in your authority of what you were made in. And keep it moving. Again, if, if you're feeling an uncomfortableness in, in the surroundings that you're in, meet new people. Go to the library. Go sit in the library and read books. Get the necessary material that you need to get you a library card. Use the computers at the library. Check out books. Read the magazines. Explore. While you're there, get some help on projects. Do some research. Ask the librarians for help. If you're struggling in school, get the help that you need. 
There are tutors available. Talk to the librarians about it. Call me. Email me. Don't just say stay stuck in the square that you're in and then you give up and you're like, well, I, I can't do this. I don't know. I'm not qualified. I don't want to hear that anymore. Do what you need to do so that you are qualified for the next job, for the next education program. College is not for everybody. I'm not stressing college. I'm stressing that you acquire the skills that you need so that you can do what you want to do in life. But how are you going to do that? Sitting on the block, sitting on the couch is not going to do it. Walking around all day on the phone is not going to do it. So network with people that are different from you, who are older than you, that are making things happen. They're making moves because you're the next generation that need to be making moves. My generation, we're, we're getting up there in age. Hi, you all. Again, Facebook is live with me on my phone. Thank you all for being with me. Thank you all for the love. I see you, Robert. Young people, my generation, we're not going to be here all the time. We're aging. I just attended a funeral last Saturday. My, boy was, my buddy was 41 years old and had a heart attack. My generation needs to do better in taking it easy, eating right, exercising, Rob, you got that baby. I hope you out there doing that, taking care of yourself. So young people, you all are up next. It's your time. But first, you all got to get some things going because you can't be coming into adulthood, running things and just talking to people any type of way. Nobody's going to want you at their company and then I encourage you to be entrepreneurs. Nobody's going to want to do business with you because your attitude is nasty. They're going to be able to tell that you don't love yourself because you couldn't even greet them with a smile or a simple hello. So starting this summer, young people, start working on you. Start loving you. And then let it project out to the next people. You're going to have to bite your tongue a lot because I can't change the person who speaks negative to me. I can't do that. I can only control myself. So while you're working on yourself, you got to work on controlling your, your reactions to what other people do and say to you. Again, I'm not talking about you being a doormat where people just walk all over you. That is not the business that I'm in, but you will Breathe, take it easy, think about what was said to you, and find an appropriate re response. And sometimes you ain't got to say nothing at all. Just leave them standing there looking silly, talking mess. And sometimes the people around you, they be like, obviously you have a problem because this young person didn't say nothing to you, didn't do nothing. So sometimes let those that are around you Oh, <laughs> those that are around you take care of the situation. <sighs> Again, it's been a joy to be here for you all. It's been exciting. I don't know if you all know, this has been extremely a nervous experience for me. I don't talk to cameras. I talk to people. So this was a learning experience. I thank Can TV. I thank my son and his teacher, Baba Eric, for introducing me to Can TV. Next Wednesday is our last show. So you all join me. Facebook, maybe I'll have you all live again. We'll see what happens. Thank you all. Young people, keep your heads up. And remember, you are diamonds. And I need you to walk in that. Live that, breathe it, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.